things a couple of times. I always have to set up my camera at my desk and I'm pretty boxed in there and I always end up losing my motivation halfway through filming because it's just a lot of pain. So I'm trying something new now. I am sitting on the floor, which is where I usually work. I'm going to try and just document me making a full costume. As I was looking around at my fabric, my piles and piles of hoarded fabric, and I thought, I want to make a wizard robe. So I drew it, which is usually the first step in my process of making costumes. I get a pencil, get some paper, and I draw out what I want to make. So the next thing is pick out the fabric, which is my favorite part of any project. The fabric. You can get a yard of fabric for $4 if you know where to look. There's no shame in buying fabric from Walmart. As long as you don't get the costume fabric, it's just as good fabric as any other place. I figured out how to get fabric for your money's worth. One of my things is you go to secondhand shop and you look at the linens. You look at the curtains and you look at the bed sheets because they have some really nice fabric there. Usually for like two or three dollars and you get a lot more than a yard and it's usually a lot wider. Normal fabric length is only a certain length wide which means if you're making cloaks and things like that you usually have to sew fabric together to get the full body that you want. If you get cartons, they're usually a lot bigger. So today, I'm going to be using three of my stored fabrics. I have this, which is really nice fabric. You can kind of tell. It's not... I don't even know how to describe it. It's like kind of velvety, but it's not at all. And then we have this, which I bought to make a Renaissance costume. This is a very worn curtain. <laughs> it is sun bleached. It is, it is a lot. This, as you can see, is very sun bleached. But I love that because I don't have to, I don't have to like wear this at all to like I don't have to stain it or anything to make it look worn it already does <laughs> and it's quite light up here and then the bottoms are quite stained which will be perfect for making a skirt I'll just put the stained parts towards the bottom and then my pride and joy probably my best find ever when I was God, I must have been 14. We went to, our neighborhood had like a, a garage party. I don't even know how many yards there were. I've made, not kidding, three dresses out of this. And I still have so much. It's like endless fabric. This is one stack. It had, I have three stacks in this bag. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna move into starting this first skirt and probably go into voiceover mode so that I can continue listening to my audiobook. Alright, so for this first robe I decided to go for an overall dress. The great thing about working with curtains is they often have seams built into them that you can use to your advantage. Why take the seam out if you're going to sew another one? For this dress, I didn't have to hem any of the skirt. I just used the pre-made hems. So I started with preparing the fabric. For this one, I only had to remove the curtain loops, but if you were using a double-sided curtain, you would start by separating both sides. While doing this, I found the price tag. I got this for $1.99, so excluding the cost of thread, this dress only cost me $1.99 in materials. After measuring on myself how long I wanted to make the dress, I mark it with a snip and cut both pieces of fabric to that length. I often use the edge of the fabric as a cutting guide to keep it uniform and straight. 
Now matching the edges of the two fabrics together, I sew both sides together. On my mannequin, I'm going to pin the dress and place the pleats. In the past, I would have just gathered the fabric at the waist, but with thick fabric like this, it makes a much better look to use pleats, and is easier to sew. This can be done without a mannequin by using math, but I find it quicker to just pin it up. I started by choosing the front and back and pinning it in place. I then found the sides and pinned those, then found the front center. Depending on how many pleats you're going to make, continue finding the centers between the pins. Each loop you can see between the pins will be a pleat. To make a pleat, draw together the loop, then flatten the new smaller loop against the waist, and pin it in place. I use this method for all the skirts in this outfit. Undo part of the left side, creating an opening I use a serger when I'm sewing clothes, and I highly recommend one as it makes things much easier and higher quality. After basting the pleats in place, I move on to the top of the dress. Using some fabric I set aside earlier, I plan the measurements. I make the front panel a bit larger than the back panel. I hem the top and sides of both the front and back. I pin the front and back of the skirts and serge it together. For the straps, I simply serge the sides, then fold them over, and sew it down. This makes a very small hem and is easy to keep straight. I attach the straps to the back panel. The next step is placing the button. I put the dress on myself this time while pinning to make sure it's accurate. Instead of cutting the straps, I just folded them over so the button will hold stronger. I then placed the buttons and sewed them on. I decided to add a secret pocket to this dress. I use a simple white fabric for this that I cut on a hem to save time. After sewing the pocket, I next have to place it. It is important that you choose the placement correctly as you will be cutting into the skirt and there is no going back. Pockets aren't as hard as I used to think they were to make, so if you want one, I recommend going for it. After choosing the location, I pinned the start and end of the pocket opening and marked where to cut it. After cutting, I pin open the sides and insert the pocket and pin that in place. I decided to use a cream yarn to sew it in place for character, so I whip stitched all around the opening, sewing it together. Once that was finished, it was time to move on to the next dress. I picked the green fabric for the outer robe. This skirt was made with a lot less fabric, so I decided to make only two large pleats at the sides. I base stitched them in place. I'm going to make a proper bodice for this one, so I'll be showing you how to customize a basic bodice pattern to your specific needs. This pattern comes with a front and back. The back is open for adding a zipper. I'm going to be making an open front cloak, so instead of cutting the front on the fold, I will be cutting the back on the fold instead. Keep the seam allowances in mind, as you will have to add them to the pieces meant to be cut on the fold and subtract them from the ones that aren't. I draw up small versions of my pattern to help me visualize it. I'm going to be changing the collar in this piece 
So I plan it out on paper before cutting it out. I draw the basic pattern and then shade away what I'm going to change. This is the piece I cut out for the front. I fold it over the edge of the pattern instead of cutting it away. This bodice has darts marked in it, so I pin where the pattern has them placed and then fold it to mark the darts. This is the back piece, which I cut out with the seam allowance folded over. I again mark the darts, then sew them all in place. For the collar, I again take advantage of a pre-done seam. I pin and sew the bodice together, then place it on the mannequin. I ended up cutting the collar so that it is widest at the top around the neck and narrowest when it reaches the waist. After I'm satisfied with that, I pin it and serge it together. I then serge the skirt to it like this in a buttonhole at the waist. Since this is a sleeveless coat, I hemmed the armholes. The last robe I'm going to make would also double as an outer robe. For this specific outfit, I'm going to wear it under all the other robes. This is the one that is going to have sleeves. I'm going to alter the sleeve pattern that came with the bodice. I drew out the pieces I'm going to cut. Because I'm using a thin, delicate fabric, I'm going to make all the pieces double-sided with a cotton fabric that will bring more support. The sleeves I'm going to make are inspired by Professor McGonagall's Yule Ball Gown fitted at the elbow, then a long flare attached. So after picking the length, I cut the inner fabric to that pattern. Because of the design, I'm going to cut the brown fabric differently. By folding it up, I'm giving room so that I can gather it. After cutting it, I sew along the edges with the largest side stitch. After that, I pin the two pieces together and gather up the sides. Then pin it in place and sew along the edges, connecting the two pieces of fabric together. The next step for the sleeve is making the flare. I line up and measure the width. I'm going to use the white fabric as interfacing for this, so I cut out two of those and a total of four in the brown fabric. Lay the two brown fabrics right sides together and put the white fabric on top, then sew them all together. Inside them out and sew along the edge again. To attach the sleeve together, fold the long pieces in half and pin the center to the inner seam of the sleeve, right sides together. Pin the rest of the sleeve around, overlapping the top, and serge together. I drew up another sketch for this cloak. I'm going to alter my bodice pattern again, this time shortening it to bring the waistline higher. 
I cut out the pattern in both the white fabric and the brown. I sew it together the same as the green bodice, darts and all, only this time it's two layers of fabric instead of one. I decided to add a hood on this cloak. To make a hood, measure how long you want the opening at the front to be. Cut it in half. Mine was 16 inches. Next measure around the neckline of your bodice and cut that in half. A very important part of hoods is to make sure it is deep enough to cover the head and stay on. So the other thing you have to measure is how long you want the top to be, which should be longer than the neckline. Cut it out with the top of the hood on the fold, then sew it from the neck up. I did not make the skirt on camera for this one, because it's basically the same as the second skirt, except this time I sewed a hem along the bottom, and all along the sides, all the way up through the hood. Now I'm going to attach the sleeve to the armhole. Connect the bottom seam together, then fold the bodice over the sleeve and pin the tops together. Then the rest. Serge it together. I'm going to make custom buttons for this cloak that you can cover with the fabric from your project. It comes with a pattern for you to cut out the fabric. Hand sew along the edge of the fabric and place the button top inside, then pull the string tightening the fabric around it. Then take the bottom and pop it in place. I'm going to sew two buttons on either side of the waist. To fasten the cloak, I'm going to be using a small chain. To decide how long to make the chain, I put the cloak on and measured how far apart I wanted the two buttons to be while closed, then multiplied it by 4. The length you get is how long the chain should be cut. I got 12 inches. To fasten it to the cloak, sew both ends of the chain to one side hidden under a button. When both ends are sewn down, the cloak is done. This style gets fastened closed like so. And that's it! This project took me around 30 hours to complete, and I listened to one and a half Harry Potter books while working. I hope this video taught you some new things, and if you make anything inspired by this video, please tag me in it on Instagram. Thank you for watching! Happy crafting!